I need my blood pressure pills. Just when I thought Britain's banks couldn't find a new way to upset me, they've done it twice in the same month. If you've watched my videos or read my newsletters for any length of time, you'll know what I think about our major high street banks. What an opportunity we missed in 2008 to let them all sink without trace. As we now know only too well, they were deemed to be too big to fail by the Labour government, and you and I, our children and grandchildren, will be picking up the tab for generations to come. I wouldn't mind if they appeared grateful to us for rescuing them, but instead they just keep on treating their customers like imbeciles and keep looking for new ways to screw us over. Before I mention the latest mis-selling scandal, let me describe my latest experience as a premier client of Barclays Bank. On Christmas Eve, £7,500 was fraudulently taken from my business account. As I record this in mid-February, Barclays has still not returned the money. Their fraud department call centre is based in India, where several barely comprehensible staff have told me I have no way of escalating my concerns. Nor can I speak to a supervisor, because there isn't one. It's with the fraud department, and they'll get back to me in their own sweet time when they are good and ready. A friend of mine is working on a high-level project in Barclays head office to restore public confidence in this stalwart of our high streets. I suggested she tries role-playing a fraud victim to see how much work she and Barclays really have to do. What I'm describing is mere incompetence. It gets more sinister when it appears that bank customers have been actively misled into committing to the wrong kind of product such as the government's Enterprise Finance Guarantee Scheme. The idea is a good one. It encourages banks to lend to companies who might lack the collateral for a conventional loan. Effectively, the government acts as guarantor for the bank on 75% of the loans it makes under the scheme. What the bank's commission-hungry sales teams forgot to point out to business owners was that the government guarantee is only triggered in one set of circumstances. When the bank has already bled the business owner dry of any and all personal assets to pay off the loan. If someone positions a potentially life-changing loan that's 75% guaranteed by the government, most of us would assume that we're on the hook for the other 25%. That seems reasonable, and you'd need to have a very negative view of your business if you felt it wasn't worth taking that 25% risk. Lots of business owners signed up on that basis, but have lived to rue the day. Writer and journalist Ian Fraser says that the banks which British taxpayers bailed out appear to be abusing this government scheme to boost their own capital positions and are misrepresenting the nature of the government guarantee to some of their borrowers. In many cases, an overdraft facility would have been perfectly adequate for the business in question, but of course, less profitable for the banks. What the banks effectively have is two bites of the cherry. First, they go after the business owner for 100% of the loan. Even if they're only 25% successful, they know the government will cover the rest. Nice work, boys. And who cares if the business owners you missold those loans to lose everything? 80% of them fail anyway, so you've just helped them along a bit. When you're dealing with Britain's high street banks, be careful out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.